what's your opinion of booking cruises outside of the cruise line? First, last cruise in Alaska. It is the I don't want to say you shouldn't book with Royal Caribbean, but there's you could book it so easily on your own in Alaska, uh, especially compared to the Caribbean. So I would very much recommend booking excursions on your own. You know, in uh, in some cases it can save you a lot of money compared to booking through the cruise line, but in Alaska it's so easy because you're docking like right downtown. Things are right around you. It's very simple to make that work. So I would definitely recommend that for you as a um, uh, as as an option. Again, look at both. Don't limit yourself and say, okay, well Matt's the only book through you know. Ex- don't book through the cruise line. No, there's something that's cool there. As an example, share when I was in Juno, we booked a Jeep tour through Real Caribbean because it was just easier. But then another port, we did stuff on our own. So don't feel like I feel like if there's one place to do things on your own, especially it's Alaska because there's no language barrier. They're all Americans. You can talk to them. Um, just plan something in advance. Try not to wing it too much there. So saw two other vlogs commenting on volcano warnings this summer in Alaska. What have you heard? I have not. I don't know. I mean, a lot of times these things, you know, I don't want how do I say this? I mean, Alaska is in, is in the ring of fire of volcanoes, but um, it's always been that way. That's actually nothing new. And I wouldn't read too much into that beyond the, unless you read into it last year, the year before that, 10 years before that. It's a thing um, until it's, a, until it's a real concern. I wouldn't worry about it because in today's day and age of 24 hour news cycles, I feel like a lot of things get blown out of proportion. Uh, I'm not saying that there isn't a threat, but I'm saying that this is nothing new per se. It's something that's been around. So I'm not really going to get too wound up about a potential that's been here for the last millennia, um, quite frankly. So my advice, if I was going to Alaska, I'd still plan on going to Alaska. I wouldn't worry about it until something changes over there. Any intel on where we'll depart from our itinerary? Not yet. Um, there are rumors, but they're just that rumors. So I don't really put too much stock into rumors until it's actually um, you know, been announced. Um, because I've heard... I'll give you an example, Lenny. Um, Anthem of the Seas. She's kind of missing from the deployment schedule for 2024, 2025. And at first, everyone's like, oh, the rumor mill was like, it's going to sail out of Southampton year round. And now the rumor mill is saying Anthem is going to sail out of Singapore. I don't know what to believe anymore. And certainly with Utopia, I've heard all sorts of rumors, Lenny, but nothing that I would really hang my hat on at this point. So you have to wait and see. I know it's not the answer you're looking for, but best answer we got there. No question, just a request. Maybe you can talk about shareholders' benefit. So people may not know about it. I learned it from quite a while ago. Six days to explore the seas. Yeah. So um, if you uh, have, if you want at least 100 shares of Royal Caribbean Group stock, you can qualify for, our, uh, I forget the amount of money. It depends on the sailing, like the length of your sailing and things like that. But you can get free onboard credit, essentially. Now, this is when I would tell you, nobody should buy stock because you want to get free onboard credit. You should buy stock on the stock market because you think it's a good investment. But uh, if you happen to be an owner of at least 100 shares of Royal Caribbean stock already, then it is a nice benefit because that you can get that free onboard credit to stock to stack on top of other benefits, deals, incentives that Royal Caribbean may have. So it's more of a you should to Dave's point, if you're not aware of it and you are a stockholder, it might be something that you would, would find helpful right there. So are the royal gifts worth it? So my birthday, so think about the cake add on. Sure. I mean, you know, do you it's more of a question of do you want that? to be a thing for you on your cruise. I mean, when you say worth it, I mean, it's it's a gift. It's a splurge. It's a way to celebrate. You know, you can have a great birthday celebration without it. But for a lot of people, they want to have a cake or they want to have room decorations or what have you. So if that's the case, more power to you. Enjoy. When can you get wow bands? Um, anytime from guest services, if you're on a ship that has them. So it has to be an Oasis or Quantum class ship. As soon as you get on board, or do you have to have the room key with you to be activated? No, you can get it beforehand, Ryan. I When I was on Wonder, we just got on board, didn't have the room keys, went straight to guest services, and yeah, I was able to get it. So um, whenever you can, and that's actually a really good strategy, is walk straight on the ship and directly to guest services to get that wow band. Because yeah. What perks come with the Royal Suite on Voyage? You're selling on May 9th, honeymooning. Priority embarkation, priority disembarkation. You're going to access the suite lounge, access the concierge. About a week before your cruise lands, maybe like, I don't know, five days, you'll get an email from the concierge, and they will list all the benefits for you. But I would say the biggies are priority embarkation, disembarkation, uh, access to the suite lounge. There's free drinks in there, especially in the evening hours. The concierge services themselves. You'll get, obviously, double crown and anchor points for staying in a suite. And, and oh, well, one more thing. Um, on the, on the um, pool deck, there's reserved seating for the um, uh, for suite guests. So, yeah. Still in Norway next month. We posted on forums looking for tips for this trip with small kids and no responses. You know, I'm doing my first Norway cruise as well, although I'm not taking my children with me. Um, I'm going to Europe for another reason that I'm not, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about yet. But um, but since I'm there in Europe, I'm going to do a cruise by myself. Anyway, I digress. 
Um, my advice to you is I would almost, I know that I think it's not cliche, but I think it's not exactly correct to say, oh, Norway is just like Alaska. They're similar, um, but not exactly the same. But nonetheless, I would definitely pick, I don't know how old your kids are also. You have small kids. Is that like three or is that one or is that 12? Anyway, one thing to keep in mind, um, Adam, is you can leave your kids on the ship in the in Adventure Ocean or the nursery. So that's a tip that I think a lot of parents are leery of. It's like, well, I don't feel comfortable getting off a ship in a foreign country, leaving my kids on board the ship. It is a weird feeling as a parent. You'll get over it very quickly. But it does allow you to experience more adult-oriented or just, you know, not that it's like, you know, drinking alcohol and having a wild and crazy party. Just things that your kids can't physically or, or you know, go to see history. They don't care about, right? You can do things on your own, but we'll still have time together. And your kids get to have fun staying on the ship. That's another option. Um, so it's something to keep in mind as well if you can't find in a particular port a tour that really appeals uh, to all of you there. What are you looking forward to the most about Icon? Uh, definitely some of the new event, Whatever the new stuff is, things that we've never seen on a ship before, always intrigue me. I love seeing where Royal Caribbean is moving, what the innovations they have. And so whether it's new dining options, new entertainment, um, I'm very, very intrigued by that. And of course, the other thing is we don't yet know every single thing about the ship. So there's still some mystery doors. Do you have more than one sailing book than I kind of? Yes, I have three right now. I have the inaugural. I have my kids spring break in 2025. And then we have the Royal Caribbean blog group cruise on Icon of the Seas in um, uh, in June, end of June, 2024. So three right now. Can I use cellular instead of ship Wi-Fi? Well, it depends on a couple things. Where are you? Uh, in port, if your cellular coverage includes the place you're visiting, yes. As an example, I'm in Cozumel, Mexico. Uh, my provider, Cricket, who's AT&T, uh, they include Mexico in their coverage. So because of that, I'm able to use Wi-Fi. But otherwise, if I was in Aruba, which is not covered, there would be a roaming fee with that, right? And I wouldn't recommend it. So I can't give it a blanket statement. Um, and in fact, in most cases, especially when you're out at sea, you, you should not because it'll cost you an arm and a leg and you'll be charged lots and lots of money. It's not very good anyway. So yeah. Why is Puerto Rico not offer, not often listed as a port stop? I love it there, but I don't see the port listed much on away slash ships. You know, there's just a lot of it, honestly, it's, it's like Cozumel. I feel like you could ask the same question about Cozumel. I feel like for once upon a time, they're all the ships went to Cozumel. Now there's very, it seems to me like there's fewer from Florida that go to Cozumel than before. I think it's just the nuances of of cruise ship deployments, right? Um, a lot more visits going to Kuki um, and maybe uh, some other islands. Um, when it comes to where a cruise ship goes, um, there's there's a deeper conversation here, right? It's not just like uh, they're like, you know what, this week we feel like going to Puerto Rico, right? It's not like you, you plan these out well in advance. There's only a certain amount of slots and you have to come to agreement with these countries many years in advance that you have a slot for your ship on that on that particular day, blah, 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 blah. You get all that, right? So um, it's, and, and I feel like there's a lot of trends, right? Maybe Royal Caribbean signs a deal with one other, with another port to promise X amount of passengers. So they have to increase the visits to that port and take it away from other places. And then a couple of years down the road, it gets reversed. So yeah. Should I get an eight day, unlimited diet package for an eight day cruise? It's a lot of food. I mean, it's, it's a great value. I mean, I'm not questioning the value on it, but it's a lot of food. If you've never cruised before, uh, I would not recommend it. I think you're. I think for a first time cruiser, you want to do traditional dining, complimentary stuff. You don't need to do that much specialty. I always recommend people do specialty in like spurts, like you know, eight day cruise. Do like two or three days at specialty dining. But from a value standpoint, yeah, the dining package will save you a lot of money. But if you, but if you cruise before, um, you've been there, done that. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the only problem with an eight day one is that you can be, there's a lot, there's going to be repetition. Obviously, you're not there's not eight restaurants you can go to eight different restaurants you can go to. And um, it just, it always, whenever I do the dining package, I always get, I was the value hundred percent there, but I always struggle with, it just seems like there's a lot of it. Some days you're not that hungry. You just want to go to the wind jammer, have a salad or have a sandwich and, and that's it. And other days you're really, really hungry. So it's like with the dining package, it just feels like you're just eating a lot of food, but Hey, can't complain. You're not getting your money's worth out of it. You know, in terms of getting money over there. So yeah. What are some options for killing time after disembarkation from Port Canaveral? A flight, our flight is out of Orlando, but not until 4.30. Seems like a lot of time to kill, but enough to do something. Kennedy Space Center is probably your best bet uh, because it's so close. And Royal Caribbean does offer tours here, Sam. So you can book it through Royal Caribbean and uh, you get off the ship. They take your luggage for you, which is the best benefit of this. And then they bus you over there. And 4.30, I mean, 
you know, if you do half a day, three, four, five hours, it's not going to, you're not going to see everything, but it's a pretty good use of your time. And I would argue that it is um, uh, certainly better than some other options that might be there. A couple other ideas you could, you could rent your, your a car. That's probably your next best bet. Uh, rent a car in Port Canaveral, you know, Cocoa Beach, whatever. And then drive around, you know, you could, you could go to Kennedy Space Center on your own. You could go uh, to the beach. You could go shopping. There's outlets in Orlando. The There's two different um, outlets in Orlando. The, uh, they both have very similar names. One is like the premium outlets. One is the international outlets. Same basic idea. Um, you could do that. You go to Disney Springs, which is a shopping district in Walt Disney World. Uh, Universal City Walk. These are both places that you can go to. Uh, maybe City Walk does charge you to park there, but I don't think Disney does. Anyway. Those are options as well. I would not recommend a theme park. Um, you're not going to get money's worth out of it to make it worthwhile. Airboat tours are also popular. Um, go to the mall. You could do and one other thing, Sam, um, is to get a hotel room. There are day passes to hotel rooms. In fact, the Hyatt, which is in the Orlando airport, has day rooms that you can you can rent. And then you can go straight to your room. You go to the airport, go to your room, hang out there, take a nap, watch TV, uh, chill out. And then when it's time to for your flight... Go downstairs and you know go through security and all that that might be another option for you uh, as well all right on that note guys i'm going to wrap it up thank you so much for joining us here uh next monday we'll be back at home at a cruise ship but at our normal time so thank you again uh for everybody for being here thank you for all of your generosity and for your time and until next time we'll, have a, we'll talk again very soon right here on youtube Bye, everybody